Hello and welcome. You are watching Sipping Off the Cuff on TequilaAficionado.com, part of Tequila Aficionado Media. I am Mike Morales here in San Antonio and that gentleman over there, my cohort. Rick Levy in San Diego. And Rick, tonight is a very special evening because... I know. We've got... We've got 10 pounds of show to fit into a five pound sack here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, hey, we are, we are the, actually the first website to review the relaunch and the return of Four Copas. Everybody remembers this, it's, it's a beloved brand. This is Four Copas Tequila, it is coming back. And, it's a uh, legacy brand. Not necessarily. I mean, you and I can discuss the, the particulars because tell, tell the folks, first of all, where the original distillery, what the name of it was. So the original distillery was La Quemada, Nam 1457. Okay. And uh, that, was, that distillery belonged to Hector Galindo Miranda and for Copas was his brainchild. And uh, he wanted to create an organic tequila. And he did. Um, Four Copas is considered um, probably the first organic tequila ever marketed in the United States. Uh, the former brand owners, those of you who have been following us for a long time, know the names of those former brand owners. And subsequently it was a very terrible story um at the end the uh the distillery i guess the, did them wrong and um they were supposedly exclusive importers of the brand in the united states next thing we know we start to see maybe a year or two down the road we start to see the uh the brand has a a texas twitter account that's how that's how i discovered things were fishy uh, contacted the former owners and one thing led to another and I don't know if you want to go deeper into that story but it was a it's a tragic story I mean it, the tequila business is littered with with good intentions and owners that get screwed one way or the other um, this was a terrible story because not only was a distillery or not only was this brand screwed but then a couple of other organic brands coming out of that distillery had to seek other um, other ways of being produced. Uh, so anyway, uh, fast forward to 2017. And it's now being produced at NOM 1480 Tequila Las Americas. Yes. Um, interesting uh, story. You, you texted me earlier some uh, an article uh, that had to do with uh, fermentation, and at the time that article was taking the fer the the it was comparing the fermentation uh, at the time from Eradura and also from the old uh, Four Copas Distillery, which I thought was very interesting. Now, so is it safe to say that uh, that in the interim this tequila has been reformulated? Yes. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to let you in on, on some information again. Uh, oh, and one other thing before we, before we go too much into it. We are going to try some new glassware tonight. This is a Stossel yeah. nosing glass that was uh, uh, the folks at uh, uh, Chisholm Trail was, were nice enough to send to us. Um, we are going to try this. Uh, and those of you who follow We've us. Been on glassware they understand we've been talking a lot about glassware yes and uh, the folks at Chisholm Trail contacted us and they apparently want us to get a bit more serious stop joking yeah around. yeah <laughs> Chisholm Trail has some really neat uh, exciting designs that we'll be we'll be talking with the owner of Chisholm Trail here on one of our open bars so you'll be able to see that and where these are coming from uh, right now they they have submitted a design to Stossel for uh, for mescal tasting so that should be very interesting to talk to him about how that's going. And, and anyway, um, he was nice enough to send us this. And so we're going to try it out tonight because as we've talked before, you and I, Rick, we think tequila is ready for, for better, better and a wider range of glassware. So we're going to try this one tonight. 
Yes. Uh, to answer your question, this is a, um, a reformulation. Now, I will tell you that my, this information that we're going to reveal and, d and divulge to our, our, um, our followers tonight is, hasn't, been, hasn't been published anywhere. We are actually the first website to acquire this brand, the, the relaunch of the brand and the remarketing of the brand. Um, even though Rick did mention that it is a, a we may consider it a, a legacy brand, their website says that they are the original organic tequila for Copas. Um, I, will, I will probably clarify that and say they are the original organic tequila brand but it isn't the original organic tequila let's just i just want to get you know the particulars out um the information that i have from someone who uh who is very close to to the brand owners and shall remain nameless um this is uh, let me get into some story here because it's very interesting. There's there's two parts to the information here that, that Rick, I haven't even shared with you. I know, I'm looking forward to it. And this is also a good opportunity uh, with the stoles of glass. It has a larger volume to it. So it's good that we pour it early and then we let the uh, aromas fill the glass. Exactly. Um, this is a pretty heavy duty glass, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Alvaro Montes is the owner of the distillery and he personally owns the last estate organic agave fields. I'm not sure what that means by last estate because there are other organic fields as we know. Um, the master distiller, Sebastian Melendres, is the master distiller. He is the original master that created the formula. Okay. Um, they were moved to Alvaro's Organic <coughs> Distillery. Alvaro is the current distillery, the current gnome. Okay. Uh, it is only five I minutes. Thought it was, I thought it was Tequila Las Americas. Yeah. Yeah, that's what the distillery oh, okay. is called. Alvaro, Alvaro it, the information I have here is that it's Alvaro the owner. It's under oh, the right. name. Okay. And that's 1580. Right. 1480. Uh, the, yes, the, 14. Now it says Alvaro's Organic Distillery was five minutes away from La Quemada, which I think was interesting because La Quemada, I, I was under the impression, was um, listed in, in Era El Arenal, I thought. And this one, the distillery, the, the Amatitan. Amatitan. So apparently, from the information that I'm getting, it, it, there, it's five minutes away. Therefore, um, it's the same formula. The water, the soil, everything is the same. Okay. Uh, Alvaro, there is better equipment at the distillery. And better, uh, the, it says Alvaro has better equipment and distillery and water and estate organic agave that belongs to him. It is not a co-op. Uh, in other words, not a co-op of other organic farmers. This is his estate. It's his, it's his uh, organic agave. And uh, apparently the information we have here that originally the La Quemada uh, distillery was not the greatest. So what you're getting is the original master distiller who had formulated the original tequila. Now, for the sake of, of, of honesty and, and full disclosure, Rick, you never had the original recipe, did you? I have not. Okay. So let's just call this what it is and, and try our stotzels and see what we think, what we pull out of this, and, and we'll go from there. So that's information that, that, that the folks out there, the, the ones who had followed this brand and loved it, and, and still seek the old distillery. Uh, this is what you're getting now. This is what you'll be seeing in Southern California. It will be distributed by glass bottom distributors. And that's, that's a for sure, for sure. They're out, of, um, they're out of Southern California. So SoCal 
you folks out there we're in Rick's neighborhood, My neck of the woods. We're your neck of the woods, we'll be getting this very shortly. Wow. This has got a nose like the Riedel, and I have a, I mean, a, it's got a, I, I, I brought my Riedel out, and, and it's... That's a Glen Cairn. Or Glen Cairn, I'm sorry. <laughs> I also poured a Riedel. Okay. Now, it's got a mouth, uh, the mouth is just a few centimeters larger, not enough to make a big difference, I would think, than the, than the Glen Cairn, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a very similar size to the Glen Cairn. I have my Glen Cairn here with my ginger jar top. Oh, look at and, you! <laughs> uh, that same top actually fits nicely. Oh, no okay. Hey, yeah. right on! A dual purpose. A dual purpose. Yeah. It's got a. I, I sense more flower, uh, more uh, more floral in this in this nose. Almost sweet. By, by the way, this was an unopened bottle that, that I opened. You saw me open it on camera. Yeah, just yeah. opened it tonight. Yeah, they uh, pitch it as uh, sweet and balanced. It's a very pretty nose. It, it it's, is. It's, it's almost, lovely. You know, it's kind of reminiscent of a, of a Highlands tequila, almost. Almost, yeah. I'm not getting... Uh, as much of the uh, the strong herbal tones that uh, I typically get in the low ones. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, you are able to kind of pick out like that uh, that those kind of pear and apple notes uh -huh. that you get with the highlands. I tried getting into their website. I had some difficulty. Rick was able to get in the the new website isn't working for me so you may or may not have problems with with their their new website i think they're in they're in dire need of a refurbishment it's actually a new website <laughs> it's copyright 2017 it sucks let me tell you i don't know how you got in but uh, it sucks man it's not it's not letting well, you I, I was in earlier today maybe their uh maybe their hosting company is <laughs> Having some trouble now. Your hosting company went the way of La Camada. <laughs> <laughs> I so love this some, nose, uh, Rick. I'm getting some grapefruit. Oh, and oh, yeah, yeah, right down on the side. The more it opens, the more it blooms. The more yeah. it gives you that. I, I smell the grapefruit. The, the grapefruit. And off of this glass, I'm just getting some white pepper. I got I got some grapefruit and maybe some lime. Yeah. Are you getting the... Um... See, so in their notes, actually, on their website, they provide tasting notes from Ana Maria Romero Mena. Wow. So, so we're really, technically, we're the second people to actually taste this. <laughs> Ana Maria, um, we've written about her in our Women in Tequila series. She came up with the, the first ever aroma kit uh, that, we were, that she was nice enough to send to us, and we've shown many times on camera and also uh, in our... Um, on our Instagram, if you follow us on Instagram. And she was also the first maestra tequilera, right? Yes. Yeah. Un, uh, unlike what other people claim, uh, she is the first one. And she's a, she's been in charge uh, of several other brands as well. She's formulated several brands. And again, you can read all about her on Tequila Aficionado on our website. So on the Glen Cairn, I'm getting a little bit more pepper and uh, herbal notes, I think. Yeah, I'm getting mostly just just a the nose on what I'm getting on on the stossel is is rather sweet. I'm not like you said. I'm not getting any any herbal that I can think of that I can pick out. I think I'm getting a bit more traditional agave aromas off of the Rito. Well, let's, now, give, let's give this a try. Let's see what it. Let's I also see what have it another like. glass here. Well, that that's has the other one similar, It has similar geometry to uh, Villaroy and Botch um, um, malt glass. Oh, the malt glass, yeah. But see, on that one, you're wow. you're heating up 
you're heating it up by touching the bottom. I mean, there's no yeah, way around it. Part. But I am getting different notes off it. I'm getting more uh, mint and anise, anise. Um, now you've poured you've poured samples in each one of these, correct? You're not you're not jumping from, you're not. No, I've, I've I've poured in each of four. In here. Okay, all right. Wow. And I've got them, I've got them sealed up. Hermetically sealed. <laughs> wow, well, maybe not hermetically. Maybe hermetically, but I I gotta taste it. I love the nose. I love the nose on the stossel. I I really enjoy that. Yeah, I, I can't find anything wrong with it. I'm not finding any off notes or anything, mm -hmm. and and neither should we because in the production process, they are uh, they're baking in brick ovens. Uh, they are uh, doing open air fermentation in wooden vats with natural yeasts. This is all. This is all from the website, right? All the notes that you've gotten from them. Um, it's a combination of places. Uh, and um, they're using uh, stainless steel stills with uh, copper coils. And they also say they're using a proprietary purification process. So, mm. not sure what that could be. Mm. Wow. That's lovely. Now I will I will tell you, Rick, that the the, the biggest characteristic that I remember from the from the old Four Copas Blanco was that it hardly had any finish at all. The finish would literally disappear after you swallow. Oh. And which was really unique. I had never had a tequila, up until that point, I'd never had a tequila whose finish would completely disappear. And, and I think, it, um, if I'm not mistaken, actually, I think uh, I wasn't the only one that thought that. Um, this one has a medium to long finish. This one, this one has a, a good attack. Um, the pepper is there, like you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, I would say it's, uh, you know, it's sort of a, a medium finish of medium intensity. And it seems like they were going for something that was going to be softer and rounder from the, uh, from the materials that I read. Um, so the goal was to create a soft product, pleasant to the consumer's palate. Uh, the product was designed to have great body, soft and balanced, not spicy aroma, soft and pleasant to the palate. Uh, not to burn in the throat, of course, you know, any good tequila shouldn't be burning in the throat. Uh, notes of cooked agave, vanilla, and different types of caramel. Yeah, the, the, cooked, uh, the cooked agave or baked agave um, uh, yeah, the is, there, is there in the flavor profile. But are you getting any vanilla? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not getting any vanilla. I'm getting spices. I am getting some of those, like the anise that you mentioned. And yeah. it, like I said, it's got a very sweet nose. I want to say that, that maybe it's green. You know, maybe it's a, um, a little bit ve vegetal. It's really unusual. I, I, it's not. But not, not vegetal in like a uh, raw agave, though. No, no. Um, but the thing is, I of all the ones I've had from Amatitan, this is this is unlike the you know, I remember I told you I can usually yeah, pick them up. I would out. agree. This one's different. This one's really different. And it and it could be, again, the water, it could be that the soil is basically the same. I I I will I will disagree on the finish. I think the finish is much stronger than the original finish of the original four copas. Uh, but that's just me. It's been a long, long time, and I have no, you know, unless you all have a bottle handy that you want to do a side-by-side, -side, let us know in the notes below. Um, From the reviews that I've seen of the original incarnation, um, it, it would seem to me that uh, this is probably a better product. I, I think it's a more stronger product. I mean, 
you know, again, it was a trailblazer. Um, the, the two previous owners uh, the, of uh, Four Copas, they were blazing a trail. No one had ever done that before, at least marketed it, mass marketed it in the United States. And, and it was the first of its kind. It is, that's why I think they call it the original organic tequila brand. <laughs> because yeah. It's not the Four Copas not, name was the, the Four first name, certified yes. organic tequila. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I agree with you, Rick. I, I, and I think, I think, it, especially with you, now that you and I have done several tastings together, we've got a year under our belt, and we've had we've had all sorts of tequilas uh, together. Um, I think you would be pleasantly surprised by by how tame the previous version was versus this one and everything's changed too i mean that was a long time ago you know soil yeah. changes water changes agave changes uh you you know you can have the same guy you know over and over again but uh i i like this one better and that's just me that's just personally i like yeah. a tequila with a with a decent finish to it it's not overpowering um the I will say that Four Copas, the original, was a bit was a bit softer. It was a softer on the palate. It was comparable, maybe, to Fina Estampa. For those of you who remember Fina Estampa when it first came out, it was a a softer tequila, softer on the palate. This one is is a little bit more aggressive. Um, I like that it's still organic, though. I like that it's just still the same guy. It's it's a bit more aggressive than something that you're characterizing as being very soft. Right. But I wouldn't characterize this as an aggressive tequila. Mm. I would say it has, you know, there's a lot going on there, but none of it overpowers any other part of it. Oh, no. No, there, there are other tequilas that are a lot stronger, a lot of Blancos that you and I have had that are really, really in your face. This one's not. This yeah. one's very you know, friendly. This, is, this one's very it, friendly. It, very friendly, yes. You could, you could, you know, serve this to anyone. You know, somebody who uh, is not necessarily a tequila drinker, you could serve this to them. Um, but then, you know, there's a lot here for aficionados to appreciate as well. Yeah, I think, I think that, uh, I think that the new breed and the old breed uh, of organic tequila drinkers and sippers are not going to be disappointed by Four Copas. The new incarnation is is a real solid go-getter in Southern California. You know, don't take our word for it. I know there are a lot of people, we were, we were showing pictures of these. They were, they were sent to us and we were able to upload those on our, um, on our Instagram and the website. And a lot of people were asking a lot of questions because there are some steadfast um, Four Copas uh, fans and they were wondering a lot about, you know, is it the same? Is it, is it from this, you know, all kinds of questions. Uh, Southern California will be probably one of the first ones to be able to have this available to them. Yeah. Uh, well, it's available now at Old Town Tequila online. There you uh, go. So Z has it for $40. Yeah, not for the Blanco, right? It's Blanco. Okay. okay. Well, that's our take on Four Copas Blanco. Stick with us because we're going to get to the Reposado and the Añejo in the next couple of segments. So in the meantime, I'm Mike Morales here Before in... What's that? Before we finish up, What's that? what are your thoughts? Are we nominating this for anything? Oh, good question. Uh, I think I think that we need to. I think that we should. I think it's a very reputable or, organic Blanco. Uh, I think our organic category this year, uh, Rick, is going to be very, very interesting. Uh, because as far as I know, we have another set of organic tequilas that we'll keep secret for now. But... You and I are going to be in charge of that organic category, uh, you know, barring any more uh, entries. And, and that doesn't mean that there won't be, but there they could be. But just in what we have in our queue right now, that organic category is, is set to be sp spun on its head. Uh, I, I say, yeah, would you nominate this? I think it's, I think it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. It's beautiful. It's a, you know, they've constructed a great profile here. And, uh, you know, there's a lot to enjoy. It is just really surprising that it's from Amati Tan. Yeah, because it's very uncharacteristic. I agree with you there. Yeah. You know, I'm getting a lot of, a lot of uh, apple and pear, I think. 
Yeah, it's uh, it could be that you know the the location again. Uh, uh, I'll I'll share more about Alvaro Montes, the the distillery owner, and and his estate in the next couple of segments. Yes. I can't give it all away. You'll have to watch. And it. I will agree with you. I will agree with you on the medium to long finish because yeah, there you go. the You're finish starting is to get it, huh? It's staying. Yeah, it's staying with me, and uh, you know it's uh, it's. Uh, slightly wet, slightly dry, you know, like right in the middle there. It's uh, I'm still getting a, a nice moderate pepper uh, with a little bit of fruit. And, uh, yeah, it's really quite a lovely finish. It, it is. There's a lot going on with, with this tequila. Or you could just mix it in a cocktail, you know. But but spend some time with it. We really, you know, try and dissect it yourself, especially those of you who are, uh, you know, long-time Four Copas fans, you want to spend some time with this one. And if you've got an extra bottle of the old stuff, do a side-by-side -side and tell us what you think. Uh, <laughs> and try it in different glasses, too. Yeah. We're well, definitely yeah, pulling exactly. out different, different Get things in different glasses. The Stotzel and, and the Glencairn and, and the Riedel. I think with those three right now, you could probably get a, a real good feel as to what else is going on in there. So, In fact, I'm going to try my Glencairn in the next segment. Uh, like I said, I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio, and that gentleman there. Mike Levy, San Diego. And you've been watching Sipping Off the Cuff on tequilaaficionado.com. Subscribe, okay, so that way you don't and miss the other, the other two uh, varietals uh, of Four Copas. And like we say...